My collection of Alpha Betas is the remnants of collecting for 29 years on and off. I was fortunate enough to work in the trading card industry early on, and it provided me with a perspective that I would have never had otherwise. Some of the best professional times of my adulthood are from my work in the trading card industry. It lasted about 10 years, but it was a great run. I had the benefit of watching some of the most creative minds in the industry at the time bring to life the Star Wars CCG, Star Trek CCG, and later the Lord of the Rings TCG. That's a funny one now. It was among, it was amazing and humbling, and it went by so fast. I'm still surprised to the condition of some of the magic cards I accumulated after so long. I found that collecting cards from those original sets was a labor of love for me because you almost never could bring in a whole stack of them at the same time. They had to be added piecemeal over time. Very painful. Therefore, we all know to gather and store them with care. It's really fun to see the cards in such good shape after this long. A mint card out of the pack is one thing, but to acknowledge the alpha betas that have made it through time with clean edges and no dings on the surface is still satisfying to me now as it always was. Somebody got the moxes and dual lands, and they're doing just fine today. Me? I got the minty mountains and the drain lifes, and I'm okay with that. Folks, welcome back to another episode of Rudy. I think I'm the only one left in the world buying vintage magic cards because everybody just cares about Lord of the Rings and all the new stuff. And, you know, for the first time in the, it's almost eight years of this channel, I get messages from patrons and you all viewers, viewers like you. And you know what it is? It says, well, Rudy, I guess the reserve list really doesn't mean as much as we thought because nobody really cares about the reserve list anymore. Wizards and everybody has realized that they can endlessly print more expensive, crazier things without even messing with the reserve list. So here we are, mid-2023. Another collection buying video. Sit back, relax as we explore it. And I think I'm the only one at this point in time dumb enough to buy old magic cards. But here I am, staying the course, buying my ABU Four Horsemen sets. Let's see what we got today, folks. We got a well-loved set. Ah, uh, the Benelish Heroes. Uncommon Black Wards. Remember, folks, all the wards are uncommon, except Death Ward. COPs. COP Greens and Blues and Whites. Ah, Consecrate Land. Nice little uncommon there. Conversion. Nice little uncommon. Oh, that's the only ward that's a common. Beautiful, original Beta Disenchant. Uh, I love this Healing Salve, the nice red color. What do we got here? Holy Strengths. Pegasus. Unicorns. Rudy the Healer. And remember, most walls back in the day were actually deemed like a powerful big deal when the game was originally designed. So most walls are actually uncommons. I know, kind of crazy, huh? That's it for the, the, um, the white cards there. Let's jump over to the blue cards. Uh, let's see what we got here. The old blue elementals. Always uh, bonding with the creatures. Flight. You know, it's always funny because people always say, Rudy, why does flight exist? Why did they print jump and flight together? It's a funny thing. Feedback. Nice uncommon. Visibility. Very nice. Jump. Merfolk of the Pearl Tribe. The infamous beginning of the Merfolk legacy. Power leaks. Power sinks. Ah, uh, Timmy the Sorcerer. Uh, the Snake Venom. Siren's Call. Hey, Seal Artifact. There's a nice little common. Unsummoned. Very nice. And into the black cards now. <clears throat> Drain Lives. Ah, uh, the infamous Drudge Skeletons. Most of these look pretty love. These definitely aren't minty or gradable. Definitely played. Hal from Beyonds. Paralyzes. Very nice. Lots of Paralyze. Ray's Dead. They groaned, they stirred, they all uprose. The zombies. Simulacrum. Unholy Strength with the original pentagram that got magic in trouble. Wall of Bone and Weakness. That's it for the black cards. Also, uh, so, so far, not that exciting, but we got some goodies coming. I assure you all, we got some goodies coming. I'm telling you, I got the little, I got some good stuff over here. Oh, right, Distant, the Disintegrates. Ah, the Dwarven Demo. A fan favorite for the Uncommon slot. Ooh, there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, the world-famous band and not talked about Bondage Earthbind. You will never see that again. False Orders. Fire Breathing. Oh, oh, wait, we got a little Granite Gargoyle. We got a little Rare mixed in there. I'll put you in the Rare section over here. Didn't realize we had a little Gargoyle hide in there. Hill Giant. Ooh, Warlord from the Nice Uncommons. Very nice. Definitely off-centered there, but beautiful looking cards. Mons Goblin. Stone Wraith. Uncommon Tunnel. Hey, the Troll from the Uncommon. Very nice. Wall of Fires. Very nice. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, going over to the Greens. Fogs. Spiders. Ah, uh, Rudy's Bearscape deck. Instill Energy for the Uncommon. Giant Hardwood Trees. Land of War Elves. Arguably one of the best elf cards ever made. The world famous that started it all. Uncommon Lore. 
Regen, stream, hey, uncommon thicket. Tranquilities, wall of wood is one of the few walls that is actually common. Warmoth, hey, web, web is actually a rare. I know, I'm kind of goofy, but it is. Wild growth, very nice. All right, folks, into the artifacts here. It looks like it, this is, this type of collection here, like I said, we're not seeing anything major, no major hits, but hey, still some beautiful um, beta cards. We have some beautiful uncommon, black vice, prism, we got some glasses, statue, hey, juggernaut, libraries, very nice, very, ooh, a nice little three library lings. Living wall, don't forget, this artwork has a baby fetus in the middle there. And once you know, you can never unknow. And I just ruined it for many of you out there. All right, that's it. And this whole chunk here, not really much to go over. This whole block is just basic lands. So we're not going to go through all the basic lands, but it is a ton of basic lands. But we have a small section over here of actual rares in this collection before we talk about some more market stuff. We got web, obviously. Let's move you aside all the basic lands. Very, very nice there. Put you in the green. Ah, uh, Demonic Hordes. God, one, I thought this was one of the most powerful black cards ever printed at the beginning, man. Uncommon Black Knight. Uncommon Beautiful Hippie. And the world famous night wait. Uh oh, what's going on with the nightmare? Is that. Did he get water damage? Wait a minute. So, hold on a second. What's. It's like, wait, what's on the ink there? What happened to this card? What's going on? I think it's damage? Or somebody write on the card? I can't tell. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't. What the heck is that? Is it dent? Did somebody touch the card up, or is that a factory? I can't tell. Can you? I can't tell, because the fact it goes down, it might be from the factory. It doesn't... Like a smear on the machine from the factory. Is that a misprint nightmare? I didn't even notice that. Anybody give me some information, but I've never seen that before. It looks like something smeared down it on the factory. Really weird. Okay. Um, we got a really strange nightmare, including these side loading sleeves. Very strange. Okay, that was weird. All right, Bad Moon. Sinkhole, not a rare, but still very cool. Uncommon Vampire. Again, these uncommons from this era are second to none legendary. Vampires, Uncommon Ice Storm. Uh, what is going on here? We have an Uncommon Berserk yelling for coffee with handwriting on it. And that is, I think it's Richard Garfield's signature. That's definitely not Dan Frazier. I think it's Richard Garfield. I think Richard Garfield might have done that. So we have a Richard Garfield signed and maybe doodled on. Berserk. Okay, Living Artifact. Oh, yeah, okay, so we got some signed cards, yeah. Anson Matt and Anson signature there. Oh, okay, we got Mark Pohl signature. Okay, so we do have multiple. Okay. Okay, I guess you never really know. Disrupting Scepter. Clockwork. Very nice rares. Jade Monolith. Eh. Sunglasses. Eh. Okay. Volcanic, eh, it's a rare. Pirate ship, it is a rare. I, I always love pirate ship, but the fact that, you know, the whole island requirement, and it's a five drop in today's day and age, a five drop for four or three, even if it can ping damage with a cannon, really expensive. The counterspell, beautiful to see. Animate, beautiful. White knight. Oh, oh, there she is. The world famous. Oh, oh, okay. We got, there's a grant. Look what we got here. What do we want to talk about first? Reverse damage. Well, <clears throat> We got a beautiful played Sarah Angel there. Looks like some definite wear damage on the edge there. Beautiful Sarah Angel. Golly. And yes, folks, can, can we take a minute and talk about the ban thing in the whole 2020 when everybody lost their, their minds and the culture, everything went chaotic? In the 2020 thing when they started banning magic cards and the wizards had to jump on the bandwagon about all the culture stuff that happened. And you ever, does anybody not acknowledge the fact that after that happened, like, Wizards and everybody, no one ever even acknowledges it. Like, no one does it again. Like, they're like, oh, we're going to review more and look for more problems in our history and our past. <clears throat> I'm like, does anybody realize it's been three years and Wizards never even made a peep about the cultural ban list, about adding to it or any other cards? Like, they did this one time during that big cultural thing going on in our country. And then after that, like, that's it. Never spoke about it again, never added cards to the list, never reviewed other sets. That was it. That's it. It's over with. Like, super weird, man. Like, like, and I remember talking to you all. There's a lot of people at that time were asking me about Invoke the P, Crusades, the Stone Throwing Devils, the Gypsy cards, and there was a couple other cards from, like, the Dark, and, like, Arabian Nights. 
And I remember being very clear with you all. Yes, it was a big deal in the moment because this company was, you know, disavowing their own cards. It was really weird after 30 years and it was never an issue. But remember, I told you all, do not make financial investment decisions based on those short-term news cycles and cultural things and flavors of the month. And now here we are three years later in 2023. And bro, you don't hear anything about, okay, we need to go through and we need to ban more cards that are not sensitive. And Like, no, there's not a peep about it. No, one. I mean, there is absolutely nothing. And I remember talking to you all about that. <clears throat> you never make long-term decisions and investment decisions based on events or things that happen in those short-term windows. Because in the long run, when you reflect back on it years later, the view is very different and people don't care. So I want to comment on that real quick because now every once in a while I see cards like Crusade. I'm like, wait a minute, whatever happened to that whole drama around it? Like, is that even a thing anymore? Like, anyways, super weird. Just wanted to bring that up. So before we end this video, I'm glad you got to share with me a whole box of these basic lands. But I really, I'm glad you guys got to go through some old cards with me. And I want to comment about the market and the biggest takeaway of this Lord of the Rings era of everything that's happened and changed. And that is, we have to acknowledge that with Lord of the Rings, the amount of money, over $2 million offers for the one of one ring, $13,000 for these other serialized number one rings, and, you know, $1,000 box toppers. Like, if anything... It's a huge moment in Magic's history because Wizards and the people at Hasbro have got to be realizing, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Why did we... And I got another video on this. We're going to have a couple videos on this topic. Why are we messing with the reserve lists and Magic 30? What was the point of the risk and the brand risk and the problems when we can go in this direction like Lord of the Rings and other IPs and just make even more money? And that's... I think the biggest revelation that we all need to really have more conversations on, that's really the game changer in my opinion, is that I believe Lord of the Rings has changed everything because the perspective of the people at Wizards and Hasbro realize that doing things like reprinting collector's editions in Magic 30 is not needed and not worth the risk when they can take the path of Lord of the Rings and serialized cards and make 10 to 50 times the money with low risk and no pushback and problems. And I believe that is the real conversation point and that is the real game changer of 2023. Because if I was Hasbro and Wizards and, well, look what happened with Magic 30 and now look what's happening with Lord of the Rings, I mean, it would be a huge eye-opener for me. And I believe the Lord of the Rings is going to lay the framework for many more things like it. And I think that's the real conversation, everybody. I think this vintage era and all these old cards, the market has permanently changed. The flow of money and people willing to spend these tens of thousands and millions on these brand new printed cards and all this stuff going on. And yet people would scream and pitchfork over the reserve list and you know some of these cards being you know a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever. And, you know, it just it blows my mind how fast things have changed. And this is one of those things that nobody saw coming. I didn't see it coming. Is it a black swan event then if nobody saw it coming? And that's really where the real conversation is, everybody. And we'll talk more about that later. I just want to have a really fun little uh, going through this little collection and everything. I thought it was a really fun beta thing to go through. It was just a nice experience and change of pace from all the Lord of the Rings drama. So thanks for watching, folks. If you have an old collection or anything, Alpha Investments LLC at gmail.com. The old PP, no giggities, just pictures and prices. And uh, put you on the channel, immortalize your cards, and you have yourself a risk-free transaction. And yes, folks, I don't pay you 90 to 100 cents on the dollar. I'm not going to pay you over market. You are going to be looking at between that 60 to 69 cents on the dollar. And uh, we'll have a good time, and uh, it'll be a fun process. Have a great day, everybody.